So uh, let's get started. Yeah, so the slides are here. Um, I've sent the link to the um, I've sent the link into the chat, right? Um, if not, they're also available. The link is also on MS Teams. Right. Um, yeah. Okay, so what do you need, right? Um, hopefully you have already installed a command line git, right? Um, so um, you may you may prefer to use a graphical interface, right? Um, I think that's fine, right? But I think it's still important to know, right, um, how Git itself works, right, under the hood, uh, and also how the command line interface works, right? Because yeah, if once you know how that works, then you can use the uh, a graphical interface to help you to help you like you know uh, do things faster. Or maybe you're just more comfortable using a graphical interface. Now. But you should still understand how Git works, right, it, before you go and use a a graphical interface to help you, right? Um, and hopefully you have a GitHub account already. You should have one by now. Okay. Um, yeah, some links, right, to the Git uh, manual, right? So let me close all these tabs from the last run. Um, this is the Git manual, right? Um, so this just this is the official manual, right? That that documents all of the uh, Git commands, and there is also the Git book, um, and it's a free book. Right, um, open source and freely available book that you can read. Um, so the slides are partly based on the book, right? Um, partly lah. Um, loosely based on the book, uh, but not really. Um, that's mainly the first few parts, and some diagrams are taken from the book, lah, But, um, yeah, that's about it. Right. Uh, you can read this too if you need, if you want more information about Git, right? Because I can't really cover that much in a two-hour workshop. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Let's get started. So what is Git, right? Git is what we call a distributed distributed version control system, right? So version control system, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a software that uh, helps you manage, you know, uh, changes to your, you know, uh, code, your whatever it is, your project, your documents, you know, can be anything. Um, usually code, right? Or could be documentation. Um, Git doesn't do that well with uh, non-textual uh, files, right? But it can still work. <clears throat> And distributed. So what does it distributed mean? Basically, it means that um, there's no central server that uh, you have to do everything with, right? When you have a repository, your local repository contains uh, you know, all of the data, all of the data in, in the repository. And um, yeah, you, you can do every you can do anything, uh, you can do everything offline. Basically, you don't have to connect to a central server to do anything, right? And this is opposed to uh, this as opposed to a centralized version control system, where um, you have to do everything through a central server. So everything is on the central server, right? And and yeah, everything is done um, on that server. And if you don't have an internet connection, you basically can't do anything. Uh, with regards to your uh, version control, so you can't like create commits, you can't you can't branch, you can't do anything, right? Uh, so the, those are like systems like SVN or CVS and older systems, uh, right? Um, so Git is not like that. Git is distrib distributed, right? And that means that there is no central server, right? And so then you might think, what is GitHub, right? GitHub is just a a possible server or a pay a possible place to host your Git repository, sorry, but it's not inherently anything special is just one place right and it's also the most popular place right um so how does the other uh, thing about git and how it works is that it is uh, it records snapshots of your files right um <clears throat> meaning that uh, and this is as opposed to uh, a patch based version control system right that records the differences between uh, commits right so for git you when you create a commit it just records the files and the actual contents of the files rather than the mm, rather than the differences between them right it, it records the com the files themselves right and when you ask git to what's the difference between these two commits right it will calculate the difference uh, on the fly right instead of yeah so this is um one way of doing version control and this is what git does right um is as opposed to a patch based version control system right and um, there are some other uh Systems like that, like um, PJO as one of them, right? Um, anyway, so this is what Git does, right? Um, so, um, and then the three areas. So before I talk about the three areas, right? I think it's important to uh, talk about a bit about how um, you know how Git 
uh, records its uh, things, right? uh, how files are represented and stored in Git. Right, so suppose you have a file, right? Um, you have a bunch of files. You have A, uh, B, C, D, E, F, right? Um, and uh, how does Git uh, sort of represent these files? Basically, or um, the files are just represented basically as this, right? Um, actually, they have a type called blob, right? So each file is a blob, uh, but that's not that important, right? And how does Git identify these files? Basically, they use the hash of the file contents, right? So the hash, you get some uh, value. Let's just call it A. So your hash of B, um, you get B right? and so on, right? So what is a hash? A hash is basically a function, right? Um, that you can put in any amount of input, right? And it'll give you a constant size output, right? That, that means like, um, yeah, that means regardless of the size of the input, right? It will give you a, a fixed output that uh, is, just based on the input, right? And that gives you some sort of uh, signature or like unique identifier for that uh, particular file. Not exactly unique, like they can be collagens, right? But anyway, that's besides the point. So Git uses this algorithm called SHA-1, right? And it produces a fixed size output. And uh, later, when we, later on, when we look at uh, the, you know, how when we actually run some Git commands, you will see the hashes and then I think it will make more sense. Uh, right? But for now, so each file is hashed and then there is, we get a hash of the file and that is how Git uh, identifies a file, right? So then how do you have a directory in Git, right? So a directory is just a list of files, right? So you can have a directory um, containing the files A, B, C, right? You can have another directory um, containing the files D, E, F, right? Uh, and these are all the hashes of the file, right? These are all identified by the hash. So then uh, how do you identify a directory? You also use the hash, right? So you just hash the directory, hash the directory and you get some uh, hash. So let's call this uh, Y, right? And how do you have a subdirectory? You just put the hash of the directory into the directory and you can have that. So let's call this uh, equals to X, right? So this directory X, so we have a directory. So we, we have a basically a, a, a structure, right? So we have uh, a directory containing three files and a subdirectory. And the subdirectory contains some files as well. So lastly, how do we have a commit, right? Uh, you know, how do you have a commit that you know actually records information? You your commit basically has some information, so like author, right? Uh, you your name and then date of the commit, and then finally it has the uh, it just points to the actual um, directory. So let's say uh, the directory is X, right? So then th that's the commit itself, right? And of course. How is the commit identified? The commit is also identified with a hash, right? You hash the commit, you get some uh, num uh, the commit hash, and you can let's call this um, I don't know uh, s, okay? And uh, now, how do you have? So you know, commits can have parents, right? That means that's the previous commit. So how do you identify a previous commit? Um, you can so let's say you have a parent commit here. Again, you have the author of the commit and a date, right? And finally. Uh, you have some directory, uh, whatever it is, right? Maybe it's not X, it's, uh, it will be a different directory, right? Um, a different, um, it will point to a different set of contents, right? Um, maybe slightly modified. And then, so let's say this, uh, this commit, this commit is a parent of this commit. So then uh, point like that. So basically you just specify the, so then, uh, then you say parent is, um, t, right? And that's it. Oh, actually, it should be the other way around. Yeah, no, this is correct. So parent is T, then point here. So this is the parent commit of S, right? And that's how you have a, a, a sort of graph of commits in, grid, uh, in Git. Okay. Um, and I think this will make more sense once we look at, uh, well, once we start running some Git commands and uh, yeah, you will see how all this works, right? Um, so Git is based on this very simple um, uh, sort of uh, yeah, representation of data, right? Um, and everything just comes out of this, right? Um, and I think it's, uh, I don't think most most books or anything won't really go into this at the start, right? But I think it's important to have an idea of how Git represents its things because Git, um, unfortunately, right, is not a very good, uh, doesn't have a very good user interface. So the abstraction is kind of leaky, right? And, and if 
Yeah. So it's good to know some of these details because it will make uh you know it will make more it will make the other commands and things make more sense, la, right? Um so it's good to have an idea. You don't have to know exactly how it works, but it's good to have an idea. Okay. So let's go back to um the three sort of areas in Git. So um in Git you have the three um you have your working directory, right? And the working directory is uh, where you actually sort of work, right? Uh, you you know uh the 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 files that you you know you call you write in the files you modify right that's all in the working directory right and then you have the um, so-called index or um, staging area and uh, this is where you sort of construct a commit so you can uh, yeah when you when you are when after you want to you know if you want to commit a file you first put it in the staging area or you put all the stuff you want to commit into the staging area right and that's where you sort of stage a commit right and then once you're ready to uh, commit it right um, then you will commit la, and then that will go into the uh, git repository itself right and how so when you first uh, you know when you first create a repository or when you first clone a repository right um, these are all equal right these are all equal because when you first clone a repository the git directory and then the staging the index and the working directory they all have the same contents then let's say you add or change a file here um, then the working directory will be different, right? And then uh, this is where you have then then uh, this is where you have modified files, right? Um, yeah. So then once you stage some files, right? Then uh, well, let's say you stage all the changes you have made. Um, once you do that, then the working directory and the staging area will be equal again. So let's just put equals, right? And then, uh, then you will have differences between the staging area and the Git directory, right? And then uh, once you commit, right? So what is committed? Basically, your commit will commit the stuff in the staging area, right? Um, and you'll create a new commit based on the files in the staging area. And then uh, that will go into the Git repository. So again, um, giving this, this is an overview of how Git works. So um, it will make more sense once we go into the actual uh, commands and, and start you know uh, trying things out okay all right so uh, let's get uh, started right so um, in each commit right as i sort of mentioned earlier uh, git stores the author and committer's um, name right and email right so you need to tell git your name and email right um, of course i mean you can tell git whatever name you want um, yeah and uh, the email you use should correspond to the emails or one of the emails that you have uh, linked to your uh, github account right uh, just so that you know github can sort of uh, properly um, associate you or associate your uh, commits to your github account right um, that's when you push to github right but i mean uh, you could use any email like it will work fine it's just that the commits won't be attributed to your github account right so yeah that's the first thing you can do so how do you do this? You just run this in your command line, right? So let's go then do that. Okay, so um, if you are on Windows, right, you need to use the git bash or git um, shell or git command line. Just make sure that you have git in your path, right? So that you can uh, run the git command, right? So let's run the, just, um, whoops. Sorry, I ended up pasting the contents of the other slide. Okay, so, right. So we run the, uh, we, I mean, you should replace this with your actual name and email, right? Uh, but for sake of demonstration, I'm just going to use these, right? Um, yeah. So um, do you, so this is, you just need to do this once for your entire system, right? Because you can see this is dash 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 global, right? And this is stored um, in a configuration file in your user directory called dot git config. Yeah. So um, it's possible for you to have like, um, you know, uh, if you remove the dash dash global, then the configuration becomes local to a particular repository, right? So it's possible for you to have a different, you know, you change the settings of Git um, or, you know, for a particular repository. So if you want to have a different, use a different email and a name for a particular project, you can do that, right? Um, that's totally fine. But you have to configure a global name. Right? You have to configure the user and uh, email and name somewhere, right? For Git to let you 
uh, commit. And the other thing you need to do is to set your editor. Yeah, because Git um, sometimes you know launches an editor, right? When you want to, when you when you basically are committing, right, in order to let you edit the commit message. So you should uh, set the editor to something that you are comfortable with using. Right. So if you're on Linux um, or Mac, you can use one of these commands to set it to like nano or emacs or vim or vs code or whatever. Right. Um, if you're on Windows and you use the Windows uh, Git installer, the Git installer, I think, asks you what editor you want to use right? um, during the installation process. So you don't have to do this. right? It should be configured already. But this is how you would uh, configure it on Windows. Lah. Okay. Yeah, so just configure your editor um, and then we can move on. Okay, so how do you access uh, the Git manual, right? Um, I have linked to it, right? But um, the other way to access it is using the Git uh, help command, right? Um, so how do you look at the help for like, let's say Git commit? Um, so I want to look at help for commit. I just type git help commit, right? And it'll bring up the manual page for git commit. So um, if you're on Windows, I think this will pull up the web browser. Uh, the the uh, I'll, It will pull up the manual page in the web browser, right? Um, but yeah, it, it's the same contents. Um, and so, yeah. The other way to look at the manual, right? You can look at the summary of options by using the dash h option. So you can do git commit. Uh, dash h right and uh, that will show you a summary of uh, the options rather than pulling up the whole manual page right maybe you just want to look at what a particular option does then you can use uh, git commit dash h and yeah it'll show you a summary of options right so um yeah you you should um you know get used to being able to read uh, manual pages like this i mean yeah um you know to learn about how you know how to use a particular tool right um because i can't really cover everything in two hours yeah so let's get uh started for real right so let us create a new git repository right so these are um you can follow along these commands if you are on linux or mac right uh, these are uh bad um yeah posix uh unix commands right if you're on windows um some of these commands may not work, right? Uh, I think make gear is different on Windows, right? Um, so yeah, if you are not comfortable with the command line, just feel free to use your uh, file explorer or whatever it is to create a directory instead, right? So this is just to make a directory. So we'll do that, right? Right, and then we want to enter the repos uh, the directory. So we enter the directory using cd. Now we will use git init, right? And they will tell us we have initialized an empty Git repository, right? So this is how you create a new Git repository uh, locally. Okay, at this point, uh, is there anyone who cannot run the command line Git uh, or hasn't managed to install it and get it to work, right? Anyone? All right, so then let's move on, right? So let us create a file, right? So um, this what this does is uh, it, okay, so the echo command will just print whatever you type, right, um, to the uh, output, uh, standard output. But if you read that, this will then redirect the output to a file, right? So basically what we're doing is just to create a file. So let's just create a file, right? And you can put whatever you want in the file. Use your favorite editor to create the file, right? So now there should be a file in your Git repository, right? And uh, now, um, <clears throat> so I will now introduce a different command called git status, right? And this state, this command I will keep, it will keep using this command in different situations because this command will basically tell you uh, what's going on in your repository, right? And it's useful uh, because you know when you don't know what to do, you just use git status, and most of the time it will tell you. Um, what's going on and what you should do to resolve anything that is going on. So right now, we just created an empty repository, right? And over here, it tells us untrack files. Hello, right? So um, yeah, 
So it tells us there's a new file, hello, that is not yet uh, sort of tracked in the Git repository. So what does this mean? Right. Uh, remember we talked about the three areas in uh, the three areas, right? So let us draw out the three areas. So again, you have your working directory. Right. Um, you have your staging area. And then finally, you have your um, repository or commit. Okay. And uh, so what we have done now, right, is that we have added a new file called hello to the working directory, right? Um, the staging area is still empty. And the current commit is that there is no there is no current commit, right? It's, the repository is totally empty, right? So, um, yeah. So that's why Git will tell us, right? Um, oops. So at this point, before we do Git add, right, it will tell us it's untracked file, right? So the next thing you want to do is to stage the file, right? You stage the file. You can stage a file using Git add. So you just type Git add and then type the file name that you want to stage, right? Um, and then now if you do git status, it will tell you new file hello, right? And so what we have done now is that we have added this file into the index, right? And so now the contents of the working directory as well as the index are the same, right? Um, and the, the commit, of course, is still, there is no, there's still no commit yet, right? We have only just staged the file, right? So now we want to, Look at git status again and it tells us changes to be committed right so now it has been staged right um you can then uh yeah it has been staged so you can now like um so it's, it's to be committed lah. yeah basically that's it and so the next thing to do is to look at the stage diff right um how do you so basically if you do git diff dash dash staged Right, um, you will see this, right? Um, basically, it tells you that, uh, so what does this git diff dash dash stage do? It tells you the difference between the index and the uh, current commit, right? So what's the difference between uh, the index and the current commit, right? You have added a new file called hello, right? Uh, and this is the diff that you see. So how do you read this diff? Basically, this is um, uh, the difference between uh, yeah, so we are looking at the difference of this file, hello, right? And it tells us this is a new file, right? And um, yeah, so this is the, the basically the hash of the file, right? And it tells us that this was uh, this is a new file. So the new file is added at the path hello, right? And this is the contents of the file, right? Um, yeah, so we added one line and the line is hello world, right? So that's that's how we read the diff. So if you're wondering what this is, right? Um, this is a tool called git delta. Right, and you can install it. It's sort of a plugin, right? And it helps you to format. Uh, it sort of formats the diffs that uh, Git outputs for easier reading, right? Um, and you know, it gives it, it syntax highlights it and stuff like that, right? Um, you can install it if you want, right? Um, yeah, that's that's totally up to you. But uh, if you do not, the by default you get this uh, a raw diff output, la. right? Okay, so. Now we have a file staged, right? And the next thing to do is to make your first commit, right? So let's just commit it. So um, so the command is git commit, right? And this is a, a flag, dash m, right? So dash m just lets you specify a commit message on the command line. <clears throat> like So if it's a short commit message, you can just specify on the command line. And uh, yeah, if it's a longer commit message, what you can do, or rather, if you intend to type a longer commit message, what you can do is to just um, leave this dash m off, right? And then Git will ask you for the, um, and then Git will open up your editor, right? That you configured earlier, right? And ask you to type a commit message. So that is what you can do as well. So let me just uh, demonstrate that, right? So I'm just going to type git commit and Git will pull up my editor, right? And I can type a, uh, commit message. So I can just type the message, right? And then I will uh, save the file. So save the file and once you exit, right? Um, yeah, once you exit, then Git will uh, create a commit for you. So now we have a commit. Yep. So now we have a commit. 
And so now let's go back to our three areas, right? Um, so in our three areas, right, we have now added, um, so we have now created a new commit. And so therefore in the repository, right? Um, so these three areas are now equal, right? And um, yeah, so uh, we'll look a bit more at that later on. So for now, we can just look at our commit, right? We can look at the commit that we have created, right? So if you type git show, if you type git show, you should be able to see, you know, uh, the commit and then you will look at the diff and um, yeah, so it looks like something like this, lah, the commit, right? Um, and then it will tell you head uh, points to master. So what does this mean? Uh, this is basically, head is basically a special uh, pointer, right? That points to the current, uh, branch that you are on, right? And this just means that uh, master branch is pointing to this current commit, right? So the way a branch works in Git is that uh, a, a branch is essentially just a pointer to a commit. And whenever you create a new commit on the branch, right? Um, you are just making the, you, you're just updating the branch to point to that new commit, right? Um, and of course, this commit has a parent. Uh, I mean, this particular commit doesn't have a parent, but uh, all commits have uh, all commits have a parent. Uh, all other commits, other than uh, the first commit, um, on a particular in a particular repository, right? All other commits in the repository will have a parent, right? And that's how you have a history, uh, of uh, commits, right? So Git show will let you see the current commit. Uh, I mean, you can see a lot of things using Git show, right? But if you just type Git show, it will show you the current commit. Right? If you want to look at other commits, um, we'll look at that later, lah. Okay, so git show, no? and you have your current commit. Okay, and of course, it will show you the div la, and that we have uh, seen earlier, right? So again, we added a new file called hello world. I mean, called hello, and the contents are hello world. Okay. Okay, so everyone, okay, have you managed to... Um, uh, create a commit. Um, everyone okay? Can you like um use the I don't know what's that the 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 the, the yeah the tick button or the thumbs up button or whatever. Yeah. Uh, any questions? Uh, yeah. If you have any questions, just uh, uh, yeah. Feel free to tap in the Zoom chat or like um, just speak up. Okay. I will take it that everyone is okay. All right. Um. So now let's uh make some changes, right? Uh, yeah. So let's make some changes to this file, right? And uh, we will uh, look at the changes. So I'm going to change it to hello orbital, right? Right, and uh, we save the file. So you can again use your own editor to make some changes to the file, right? Now we're going to use git diff, Oof. git diff, right? And uh, this is what you see, right? You have uh, deleted this line and then you have added this line. So the diffs happen basically uh, line-wise, right? You know, basically, yeah, the diffs, are, all the comparisons are done based on the line. So Git will, um, I mean, the diffs happen. Um, so when you change a part of a line like that, basically you delete the entire line and then you add this entire line. Uh, or rather that's how it's represented in the diff format. La. Right, yeah. So that's how you read this diff. And these numbers here just represent the line numbers, uh, the lines that are affected, right? So we are here, we're deleting line one, right? And then we're adding in um, line one, right? Um, and if you have a multiple line diff, then uh, there'll be some extra numbers here to indicate how big that, uh, how, how many lines you're actually uh, changing. So what have we done here, right? Basically, initially when we created the commit, um, all of these regions are equal, right? And now we have uh, made some change to hello. So basically what we have here is a new uh, hello file, right? And one, and when we do git diff, right? Git diff is showing us the difference between um, the staging and the working directory. So this is git diff, right? And this is 
git diff stage. Right? So that's uh, the two, the main two diff commands I think that you will use. All right, git diff is to tell you the difference between the working directory and the staging uh, or the index. Right, and uh, git diff stage is to tell you the difference between uh, the current commit and the index, and this is basically what you are going to commit, right? Git diff dash dash staged. And now, if you look at git status, right, it will tell us changes not staged for commit, right? And and we have a file that's modified, and say here no changes added to commit, right? right. So um. So now let us just uh, add this file, uh, add these changes to commit, right? So let's do git add, hello. And again, now it tells us changes to be committed, right? So if you go back to the three areas, right? Now, basically the staging area is equal to the working directory, right? So now um, tell me in the chat, right? If I ask, if I look at git diff now, uh, what will you expect to see? Right, exactly, right? Nothing, right? Um, and if we do git diff uh, dash dash staged, you will expect to see yeah, minus hello world plus hello orbital, right? Um, yeah, so that's what you see. Okay, okay so uh, let's just create a commit. And now, yeah, so let's just create a commit and let me go through the summary so far, right? So we have uh, done, we have looked at git in it, right? How to create a new repository, right? Um, how to add, uh, how to stage changes or add files into the staging area. Um, how to look at git diff and give, uh, how to look at the, yeah, uh, what do you call it, the diff between the working tree and the index and, um, and the index and the commit, right? So git diff and git diff staged. Um, git status, how do we look at the repository status? Right? And git status is a very useful command because it will tell you a lot of things. Um, yeah. So when you don't know what to do, again, when you don't know what to do, you just look at git status, it will tell you uh, what needs to be done. Um, git commit, right? Um, so yeah, git commit creates a new commit, right? And you can specify a commit message uh, on the command line if you want, right? And we have git show, which uh, shows the current commit. And uh, later on, we'll see how to use it to show other things as well. Right? And uh, maybe you may want to read through the manual pages right, to see what other things these uh, commands can do. Lah. OK. Um, any questions so far? All right, let's move on. Okay, so um, now we have created two commits, right? Uh, let us view the commit history, right? So we do git log. What does git log do? It uh, shows you the commit history, right? So again, you see here, you have two commits, right? This was the first commit that we made. This was the second one. So as I was talking, I was talking about a commit hash just now, right? So this is the commit hash, right? Um, it's a unique identifier for that. This particular commit, right? Um, and it is unique uh, in the sense that because it's a hash, right? So um, the chances of a collision um, is are quite uh, very low, right? And in fact, if you have a particular commit, it's possible to sometimes identify just based on the commit hash, right? You can um, search for you can just search that particular commit uh, on in Google, and sometimes you might be able to even find the um, exact project that the commit is in, right? Um, just based on the hash without even the project name. Yeah, uh, sometimes uh, because I think Google doesn't always index the hash, right? Okay, so what does this mean? Again, hit is a special uh, pointer that points to the current branch. And this is how uh, Git tracks the current branch that you are on, right? It uses the hit pointer, right? And so hit is pointing to master. And this just means that master is currently on this commit, right? So this is how you read the log. And again, here you have your author, you have your date and the commit message. Okay. Okay, so uh, before I move on, like, um, so just now I said, 
So Git show will show you the current commit, right? But what if you want to look at some other commit, right? What you can do is just paste the commit hash, right? Um, so if you just type git show and you uh, type some commit hash here, it will show you that commit, right? And you can actually type the prefix of the commit uh, hash, right? Because it's uh, uh, unique enough that git can probably find the uh, commit, right? So you just type git show and then uh, the first seven, eight characters should be enough to uniquely identify the commit. And another thing you can do, remember I said the head is a pointer to the current branch, right? So if you want to show the current commit, you can just type git show head and it will show you the current commit that you are on, right? And then there is some uh, syntax, for example, git uh, show tilde, right? And this will let you uh, see the previous commit. So it's an equivalent to git head tilde one, right? This means the one commit before head. Right? And you can then increase the number, but of course this won't work uh, because we don't have, we only have two commits. Uh, so um, there is no second commit before the current commit, right? Yeah. But this is how you can uh, show certain commits um, in Git uh, or look at certain commits, right? Um, but most of the time what you would do or what I do uh, at least is you just look at the log, right? You find the commit you want to look at. Then after that, you just commit. You, you just copy the hash and then use that to look at the commit. Uh. Right, or alternatively, right, you just go to GitHub and click on the history, right, and then you can see uh, the commit history. Okay, uh, ignoring files, right? Um, sometimes you don't want Git to track a certain file for whatever reason, right? So let us let us create a file, right? Um, touch is a file, is a command, uh, it's a Unix command that just uh, updates uh, the last modification time of a file, right? But, um, if the file doesn't exist, it will also create the file. So um, we just create a new file, right? And then now we look at git status. It will tell us, okay, this file is untracked, right? Um, so what if we do not want git to track this file, right? Um, we can add it to git ignore, right? So what is git ignore? Um, git ignore is just a file, right? In the current directory. You need to, um, yeah. So you can uh, open the file in your text editor, right? And then you just uh, specify the path to that file. <laughs> right? Or you can just specify the name, right? Um, and I'll tell you, I'll explain what the different ways of representing the path mean, right? So you can just specify the name of the file and save uh, the dot .git ignore file. And now if you type git status, right? Um, you see that now the untracked file is git ignore rather than ignore me, right? So you should commit the git ignore file, right? Um, and yeah, but you can see that ignore me is no longer tracked, right? So now you can, if you specify git status dash dash ignore, right? You can see the files that git has ignored, right? It will tell you that it has ignored uh, this file, right? So yeah, so now let's commit, uh, let's commit our git git ignore file, right? So we can do git add dot and dot is refers to the current directory, right? So um, if we do git add dot, that means that we are going to uh, commit all the changes in the current directory. So we can add a git ignore file, right? And now if we type git status, you see that uh, working tree is clean, right? And that's because it has um, ignored this file. So um yeah so we add the we add the git ignore file and commit it right and you can see the git status shows that the um, working tree is clean right and um, if you do git status ignore it will show you the files that were ignored so uh, why would you want to ignore files basically you should ignore files that are you know um sort of can be derived from files or from other stuff in the repository lah. So for example, like your dependency files, right? Um, compiled code, right? Um, compiled binaries, um, log files, etc. Right? These things that are not, you know, that are not, uh, that are generated um, by, you know, by runtime or by a compiler or whatever, you do not commit those, right? You only commit the uh, source code, right? That you can't uh, derive from somewhere else. <clears throat> uh, in, as a general rule, right? So if you are making a web app, right? And, and I think a lot of 
Orbital projects are web apps, so you, you will probably be using uh, npm or yarn, right? And you will have uh, this uh, node modules directory, right? Um, and you should not commit that directory into your Git repository, right? And therefore, you should put it into the Git ignore. Um, you should ignore it and Git ignore. So uh, there is this. Uh, collection of uh, useful git ignore templates that I have sent the link to right uh, in the chat right so this uh, is a set of um, this is a repository containing just example you know uh, git ignore files right uh, based on your particular language and stuff so you know if you're yeah if like, you're using like node, node.js for example you can just um, copy the template for the git ignore file from uh, for git for yet Sorry for Node.js from the uh, collection, and then you can you know use just use that gate ignore right, um, yeah. Okay. Okay, so what is the format of gate ignore right? Basically, it's, um, it's a sort of a glob pattern right. Um, so we start from the basic, the most basic, which is just a file name right. So this will just match this uh any file with this name anywhere in this uh. Anywhere in the you know in the direct, in in the hierarchy below the gate ignore file, right? Um, anywhere in the repository. Lah. Now, if you specify a slash at the start, right, that means you only match the file uh, debug.log in the same directory as the gate ignore file, right? Um, you can specify like star.log, right? And this will match any file ending in uh, whose file name ends in .log, right? Um, in anywhere in the repository, right? Um, you can spe specify something like this, right? And this will mean this will ignore like a, basically any file that is in a directory called logs, um, which is in any uh, anywhere in the in the in the repository, right? Um, and you can do this, which will ignore the directory logs itself and anything under that directory, right? Um, and then this will just ignore. Uh, so the the first line here will ignore any file ending in the log, um, in any directory in any in a directory called logs in the root of the repository right and this the difference between this and this is that um, this one will match any number of directories this one will only match a single directory right um, yeah one directory so this one can match uh, zero or more directories this one will only match a single directory okay you can look here for the full pattern format lah. All right. Okay. Um, let me take a sip of water first. Okay, let's move on to the branching and uh, collaboration part. Right, so what are branches in Git, right? Uh, branches basically let you have, you know, multiple uh, lines of uh, development happen, you know, simultaneously, right? Um, so for example, you might have a, you might have a master branch where you do your main uh, development, right? And then you might have a stable branch where you just, uh, you know, um, basically like you just do bug fixes on the, on the, the last version that you release, right? Something like that, right? Or maybe you have a master branch, right? And then uh, you do your development on feature branches, right? And then basically you do your development on feature branches and then uh, maybe you, once the feature is complete, you merge it back into master, something like that, right? So there are many different branching workflows. Um, I mean, there are many different Git workflows, right? And, and um, yeah, uh, you can use branches in different ways. So uh, Git, yeah, in Git, right, a uh, branch is a just a pointer to a particular commit, right? Um, and yeah, that, that's basically it, right? It's just a pointer to a particular commit, right? Um, or rather, that's how it's implemented. Of course, um, you don't have to, as in, you don't need, don't need to, you know, manually, like, update a branch or anything, right? When you commit, um, it will automatically update the branch for you so that it points to the new commit that you have created. Right. 
Um, and the default branch is usually named master or main, right? Um, yeah. And as I have been mentioning, right, head is a special pointer to the current branch that you are currently on. So again, the branch points to a commit and head points to the current branch that you are on. All right, so how do you create a branch, right? There are multiple ways to create a branch, right? So the first way to create a branch is to use git checkout dash b, right? So um, git checkout itself is a command to change branches, right? Um, but if you, but if you specify the dash b option, then it will create a new branch, right? And also switch to it, right? So what, how do you create a branch? Just to, Right. And this will create a new branch right on the same commit as the current uh, you know uh, as the current master right and uh, switch to that branch. Right. Um, alternatively, what you can do is also right. So what you can do is to use git branch command right to create a new branch. So you can just uh, let's see. So this will have no output, right? But if you do, if you just do git branch without any uh, other arguments, it will then list the branches in your repository. So you can see that we have actually created a new branch here. And then after that, you can switch to the new branch. Right? Yeah. And uh, so you can also use this newer command called git switch. Right. Um, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So git switch and uh, git checkout. Uh, git checkout is a superset of git switch in, in kind of yeah. Uh, git and the reason and this is a newer command uh, because basically people felt like the checkout being able to do or checkout was too overloaded right. Um. So they sort of split up some of the functionality into newer commands right. But of course, uh, checkout still exists lah. Uh, and um, the reason I am letting you know about checkout um, is so that when you read other Git uh, articles or guides, right, you will know what checkout does uh, because uh, Switch is still quite new. So a lot of articles and, and you know, uh, answers on Stack Overflow and whatever, they still refer to Git checkout. Okay. So when you create a branch, basically, so you have this comment structure, right? And you create a branch and it's just pointing to uh, so master was originally on this commit, right? And you create a new branch, it will still point to the same commit, right? So that's, yeah. Okay, so we have already seen how to list branches, right? So you just type git branch uh, without any other arguments and uh, that will let you, um, yeah, that will list the branches that you have, right? So now if we type git log, Right, you can see that uh, head is still, so currently I switched just back to the master branch, right? So my head is pointing to master, right? And you can see that there are three branches on this um, particular commit, right? And they can, of course, they can uh, diverge, right? So how do you uh, change branches? Um, we already done that, right? So you can use, um, sorry. How do you change branches? You can use git checkout or git switch to change, uh, yeah, change branches. Okay, so now let's talk about merging, right? So let's say you have, um, let's switch back to our, let's switch back to our new feature branch, right? And, um, you know, let's um, develop, make, do some development, right? So um, we create a new file, create a new file and then we uh, commit it. Right. So now we have a new commit, right? And you can see that um, we have a new commit. Um, so now our head, uh, like, yeah, so we were on the new feature branch and uh, the new feature branch is now on a, a commit on top of the old, uh, on the, of the previous commit, right? And the other branches are still on the previous commit, but our new branch is on this uh, commit, right? So what is our graph structure like now? It's basically like this now. 
we have the master branch, right? And it's still pointing to the original commit. And then we have the new feature branch, which is pointing to our new commit, right? So um, let's say we now want to merge, right? So when you do with branches, basically once you're done with them, uh, sometimes you want to merge the changes in that branch into your branch, right? Um, so there are a few ways to merge and one of them is called fast forward merging. So why is it called uh, fast forward merging? Basically, you can see here that this uh, new feature branch is a um, descendant of the master branch, right? And therefore, we can just merge uh, new feature into master by just updating master to point to this commit, right? That's why it's called fast forward because basically what we're doing is uh, fast forwarding master to the this commit, right? So how do you do such a what? How do you do such a merge, right? You you go to the branch that you want to merge into, right? So you want to merge into master. So we go onto the master branch, then we type git merge, new feature, right? And um, it will merge, right? So you can see here we have uh, git merge new feature, right? Um, and you will say fast forward. Um, yeah. So now if you look at the log again, you can see that the master branch and new feature, uh, master branch is on the same commit as new feature. So we have done a fast forward merge. Okay. Um, everyone okay? All right. Okay. Um, yeah. So now, yeah, new feature and master both point to the same comment. Okay. So now, if we're done with a branch, we can just delete it, right? And how you delete it is using git branch dash d, right? Dash d stands for delete, and you can specify the branch to delete. And uh, yeah, so that's how you delete a branch. Lah. And um, in some cases, you might have to use the capital D, right? Uh, and that's because if the branch that you have, you want to delete um, has not been merged into your current branch, right? You then you have to use the capital uh, delete, right? Instead of small d, right? Um, yeah. So that's how you delete a branch, right? Okay, so now let us, uh, now we want to look at uh, another form of merging, right, which is called, um, which is a non-fast forward merge, right, and in order to do so, sorry, in order to do so, we will clone a repository, right, uh, that, um, so that has been prepared to allow you to um, yeah, do a non-fast forward merge, right, and we're also going to see how to resolve a merge conflict. So, uh, first, uh, go to this repository, right, if you have the slides open, just, uh, open this link, right? You should be able to go to this, uh, yeah, this repository here, right? Uh, and you can click on this uh, code, uh, download, um, sort of download button, right? And yeah, so at the top uh, here, you can see the link to clone the repository, right? So you can use either HTTPS or SSH, doesn't matter, right? Um, if you have SSH, then just use it. Uh, I mean, if you have SSH key configured with uh, GitHub, then you can use SSH. Otherwise, you can use um, HTTPS, right? And if you are on uh, Linux or Mac, I would recommend setting up an SSH key, right? Um, yeah. And if not, if you're on Windows, you can just use uh, HTTPS, right? But the problem with uh, this is that you have to you you have to key in your username and password every time, now. So then they have come up with this uh, Git credential manager um, to help you save your password. Uh, yeah, so you can use either, lah. doesn't matter. So for me, I will use SSH, right? So I'm going to uh, go to the parent directory. So you should get out of, you shouldn't have uh, Git directories, sorry. You shouldn't have uh, Git repositories. Uh, we didn't Git repositories, right? Uh, most of the time, right? So I'm just going to uh, go to the parent directory, then I do Git clone. And I'm going to clone uh, clone that repository, right? So now it will clone it into a directory called merge conflict. Right? So yeah. So I will clone the repository, right? And now you enter the repository, you should see one file. Okay. So now if you look at git log, right? Um, you will see that we just have a single branch, right? Um, so now 
we want to set up a few branches, right? Uh, so um, these branches already exist uh, in the remote. You just need to uh, create them or you just need to create them uh, locally, right? So you just do git checkout conflict one and git checkout conflict two, right? And uh, yeah, we are, yeah, so we are just, we are creating new branches that sort of are based on branches on the remote repository. La. Right. And now you should have a few branches, right? And if you do git log, if you do this, right, you can look at the git uh, commit uh, graph, right? Um, so we can see here we have uh, three commits, right? So the master commit, the sorry, the master branch commit, right? Which is here. And then after that, uh, we have two branches, which both have a single commit on top of master, right? Um, and they have both diverged, right? So basically, what does this look like? It looks like this. So we have, again, the master branch commit, right? Which is the parent of both of these commits. And then we have the conflict one and conflict two um, branches, right? And they both have a single commit on top of master, right? Um, and now if you were to go and look at the actual changes, right, in, in the branches, If you were to actually look at the uh, changes in the branches, you will see that they modify the same line in the same file, right? So when we want to merge these, um, there is no way for Git to know, right, uh, which line that we want, right? Um, therefore, we will end up with a merge conflict, right? Um, so let us try and do this. Right? Again, so we have our log here, um, our graphical log here, right? Um, yeah, you can do this and you will see a sort of textual graph. So if you use a graphical user interface, right, um, like um, my Git GUI, then you can look at a graphical version of the history, right? So, I mean, yeah, it, it's basically the same. It's just graphical, right? So it may look a bit nicer. Um, yeah. Okay, so now um, let us do the merge, right? I think you, have you already cloned uh, the repository? It means that the directory already exists, also maybe uh, just uh, delete it or something. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go back to the master branch, right? And we are going to merge in uh, the conflict. Um, so let us merge in conflict one branch first, right? Um, and that will be a fast forward merge, right? Because, um, yeah, because we can. Then um, now if we try to merge in conflict two, what we're going to get is a conflict, right? Because again, uh, both of these branches modified the same line in the same file, right? And uh, Git cannot automatically uh, help us decide right which line uh, is correct, right? So we have to manually resolve the conflicts. So um, if you now open up the by file, you will see this, right? Um, and this is what we call the uh, conflict marker, right? So it's the left um, is seven less than right in a row, and this is how you can find conflicts in the uh, in the file. Uh. So um, what does this mean, right? This means that uh, the contents of our file in the head, right, being our current branch, right, is goodbye. And the contents of the file, or rather the contents of this uh, chunk or this line, right, in the branch that we are merging in, right, is farewell, right? So we need to decide which one of these two uh, that we want to use, or I mean, we need to decide how to merge these two, right? Um, so you can merge it any how any way you want, right? Um, I'm going to just uh, say that okay, this is the one that I want, and therefore I'm just going to remove. Oh, whoops. Yeah. No. Sorry, I'm going to just uh, what I'm just going to keep this line, right? Which is this is how I'm going to resolve it again. Uh, you can resolve it in any manner that you want, right? Um, 
right? And once you have resolved the, the conflict, right, um, then what you do is, again, we look at git status, right? Git status tells us you have unmerged paths, fix conflicts, and run git commit, right? And then here it tells us use git add to mark resolution. So what we want to do is just git add and then uh, buy. And then now it says all conflicts, uh, all conflicts fixed, right? So then we want to git commit. And once we run git commit, it's going to um, open up the commit message editor, right? Uh, in the editor that you configured, and then it will automatically generate a merge conflict message, uh, sorry, merge commit message for you. And so merge branch conflict too, and then it'll tell you some of the conflicts that you had, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, so you can just accept the um, automatically generated uh, message. And then, then you're done. La. So now you have a merge commit, right? And if you look at the, if you look at the log, this is what you see, right? Um, yeah, you can see here we have um, the new merge commit and you can then tell that it's a merge commit because it has two parents, right? And it also tells you merge commit, la, right? And you can see that this corresponds to this and this corresponds to this commit hash, right? So now um, we have sort of merged the branches, la, right? So, um, And so this is what we have now. So we had the conflict one branch, right? Uh, and the conflict two branch, and now these are merged uh, into master, right? And then we have a new commit here. And this commit is the merge commit, right? Merge commit. So merge commits are special because they have multiple parents, right? They don't just have one parent. Most co normal commits have just one parent, right? So this is a normal commit, right? And, and this is a merge commit. Okay. All right. Um, so, are we all okay so far? All right, so um, how do you create, now let's move on to collaboration on GitHub, right? Um, how do you create a new GitHub repository, right? You should go to your um, GitHub homepage or actually you can just look here. Lah. And so, um, yeah, you can just go here, click, click on new repository or you can go here, right? There should be a new uh, repository button here. You click on that, um, then you can create a new repository, right? Um, you just need to enter a name, so, right? And you can choose public or private, et cetera, right? Um, and you can create, uh, create a repository, right? So you'll get to this page, right? When you have an empty repository, right? Um, and it'll tell you how to uh, push an existing, existing repository or create a new repository, right? Um, and the, you know, the, the key part is this, lah. Right, and you can see these are the same mostly. Right, so what this line does is to add a new origin, uh, a new sorry, a new remote, right, to the repository. Right, um, a remote is basically a remote uh, Git repository where you can push or pull from. Right, so we will add a Git remote. Uh, so I'm going to use the the Git repository that we created earlier in the workshop. Right, so we're just going to add the origin. And now you can push, right? So what does this command do? Right. Okay, the first command is git remote add, right? Um, and this is the origin name. Oh, sorry, remote name. Right, and this is the URL, uh, the whole thing, right? So the whole thing is the remote URL, right? And over here we have uh, git push dash u. Um, so uh, dash u means to set upstream. And this is the remote, right? Uh, this is the remote. And this is the branch to push. Right. Um, 
So what does it mean to set upstream? Basically, you are making your current local, you're making a local master branch, right? Um, sort of track the remote uh, branch that you're pushing to. Okay. And uh, this, this is actually shorthand for this, right? What does this mean? Basically, you're, you're pushing the local master branch to the remote, uh, the master branch on origin, right? Um, so you can actually do other things. For example, if you have a different branch, that means you, are, you want to push uh, the different branch onto master. So that means you're making the remote master point to whatever um, this points to on your local uh, repository or yeah. But normally you can just, normally you just do this, right? Uh, or normally what you do is you just do this, right? You master, you want the master to uh, be updated to the same commit as your local uh, local master. And you can just, that means you're doing this, right? And then you, if you're doing this, then you can just use this as a shorthand for, uh, for that, right? And then after you do this, once you have run git push dash u once, right? And then uh, git will set up, um, git will set up the, yeah, see it says here branch master, right? So your local master branch is now tracking the remote master branch, right? And so um, next time you want to push, you can just do git push, right? And you will know, okay, I want to push to the remote master branch on origin, right? So that's the purpose of this dash u. Now, once you have pushed, right? Um, you should be able to refresh your page and you can see the contents of your um, repository. Lah. Yeah. So that's how you uh, push, right? So you create, again, you have this stuff here, right? You copy that. Um, so you create your repository, then you add the remote, right? Um, then you push it. Uh, by pushing, what you're doing is you're just making the remote branch be updated to point to the same to the same commit as your local branch, right? That's what a push does. Okay. Now, if you want to update a repository, right, what you can do is to um, git pull. So the full command is called is like that, right? Uh, git pull, right? And this is the remote name, right? And this is the remote branch that you want to pull into your current branch, right? So you can run this and it should tell you everything up to date because you just pushed, right? And again, if your branch is tracking a remote branch, right? Then you can just do git pull and uh, it will know um, where to pull from. Yep. So what is pull actually doing, right? It's just doing a git fetch, right? So what does git fetch do? It, it downloads the remote branch into your local uh, repository and names it this uh, thing called fetch hit, right? Um, and then after that, it just does merge fetch hit. So it tries to merge the fetch hit or whatever it downloaded into your current branch, right? Um, and if, of, course, of course, if your branches are equal, then it will tell you up to date. Lah. Okay. All right. So, um, so uh, the other way to update, right, is to do uh, another way to update instead of um, merging, right? So over here, I said pull is equivalent to fetch and merge, right? But if you specify git pull rebase, if you specify git pull rebase, right, then instead of merging, it's going to do a rebase, right? So what's the difference between a merge and a rebase, right? Basically, if you have a rebase, right, then you can do this. Uh, sorry, when you merge, right, uh, let's say these are the remote, right? So remote, um, you have commits A, B, and C, right? And this is local. So how do you get into this situation? Basically, you started work, um, you started work when the remote branch, or let's say GitHub was on uh, this commit, right? And then someone else did some work and pushed it before you did. And after that, you are now, uh, then you are doing your work as well. So now you have a commit C locally, right? And um, if you were to just git pull, right? Without, um, without the, by default, uh, right? Um, without the rebase flag, then what you will do is uh, end up doing a normal merge and this will create a merge commit, uh, right? Um, 
right? To merge in a B and C into a single branch, and then you will then, yeah. So you end up with this merge commit, right? Uh, but you know some projects do not like merge commits, right? They feel that merge commits are messy, and so they will prefer to do a rebase instead. So what does rebase do, right? Uh, it just basically you are taking your your local changes, right? And you're applying it on top of the um, remote branch changes, right? Um, without, um, yeah, and, and you do not create a merge commit, right? So then, uh, yeah, so you end up creating a new commit. So this is something like C prime, right? Um, a, B, and again, you had your C here. You had your C here, but it's now pointing to, so C is originally uh, based on A, right? By rebasing it right and and that's where the name comes from right rebase right you're rebasing it onto b right and then you have a new commit here and then then you can uh, push uh, and then you can update master to this commit i mean uh, by rebasing you'll update master the point to this new uh, rebased commit right and then you can push master to the remote and you keep your history um linear okay uh, makes sense Sorry. All right. Um, okay. So um, just now I was talking about this uh, HTTPS versus SSH, right? So again, it doesn't really matter, right? Um, if you have an SSH, SSH key set up with GitHub, then you use SSH. Otherwise, um, you can just use HTTPS, right? Um, again, if you're on Linux or Mac, I would prefer, uh, I think it's good that you set up an SSH key, right? Um, if you're on Windows, you can set up an SSH key as well, It's but it's kind of difficult, so you can just stick to username and password um, and use the Git Credential Manager. Yeah, okay. Um, so let's, now we're going to look at how to, you know, uh, do a fork forks on GitHub as well as uh, create uh, pull requests, right? Um, so let us clone uh, this uh, Git repository called uh, forkme, right? Um, so again, I will send the link to the uh, chat. So what you can do, right, is um, again, just clone the repository, right? So I'm just gonna copy this. Okay. So now, um, so the scenario is, let's say you are you know, contributing to some project and you made some improvements. So um, um, I don't know. Okay, you made some improvements, right? And now you, uh, right, so you made some improvements. So now you have a uh, additional commit on top of, um, you know, the, the original Git repository, right? And you want to contribute the, um, yeah, you want to upstream your contributions or you want to contribute your changes back to the uh, upstream repository, right? So how do you do this? Um, on GitHub, what you do is you go and fork the repository, right? Um, so you can basically go to the repository and you click on the fork button, right? Then you can click on, um, yeah. So if you have, if you're part of any organizations, then it will ask you, um, you know, whether you want to, yeah, where, which organization you want to fork it into, right? Um, otherwise you can just you know, um, fork it into your local user, right? Um, so once you fork the repository, you will get to your, this page, which is the fork, right? Um, then you can, uh, get the URL of the fork, right? So again, you go to this uh, button here and you can copy, you know, um, either HTTPS or SSH, right? So what you want to do, okay, the first thing you want to do is to update your repository, right? Um, just to make sure that, you know, um, there haven't been any uh, changes made to the upstream 
And uh, in this case, normally we try to use rebase just to instead of, you know, uh, and avoid creating any merge commits, right? Because um, a lot of projects will not be happy if you create a PR or pull request, right? With a uh, merge commit inside it, right? So we want to add a new remote, which is your fork, right? So we do, okay. So we add the, um, we add the remote. And then what we want to do is just push our new commit to our fork, right? So you can do that. And again, this is the same push command as earlier. So you do git uh, push, right? Um, git push, and then this is the remote name. In this case, I named it fork, right? And then uh, master is the branch that I'm pushing to, right? Uh, again, this is a shorthand for uh, local master to remote master. Okay, so once you have pushed, you should be able to, um, you should refresh the page and you should be able to see that, okay? Um, this branch is one commit ahead of the upstream, right? And then once you see that, you can do, you can go to contribute, right? And you can click on uh, open, open pull request. Right, um, and then, yeah. So over here, it will let you compare the changes and then you can create a pull request, right? So you can click, on create pull request and over here, yeah, you can see that actually you can pull request to any branch and any, you know, any repository or any fork, right? Um, yeah, so you can go ahead if you want, uh, create a pull request if you want, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, and then you can, you can create a pull request from someone else's uh, repository if you want. Um, so another useful thing is that you can actually create a pull request between the same, you know, uh, you can create pull requests between branches in the same repository, right? If you want to. So you, let's say you are, you are working with your partner on Orbital, right? Um, you all can work in the same repository, but then, um, you know, you can use your own branches and then you can just pull requests to each other uh, in the same repository, right? That's one way you can work. Um, it's really up to you, lah. Okay, so you can now create a pull request, right? Um, and then you can give the pull request a title and give some, you know, uh, comments or uh, description of the pull request, right? And this is, of course, separate from the commit message, right? Your commit message, uh, so like, if your pull request consists of multiple commits, right, uh, then you might want to describe the overall, uh, you know, what changes you made, so on and so forth. Okay, right. so that's how you create a pull request, right? And um, yeah, so um, just some comments on uh, commit message uh, discipline, right? Um, so there are some conventions on the commit messages that people uh, follow in, 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 the Git, uh, in, in Git, right? So the first line should usually be a 80 character title. Um, or within 80, uh, less than 80 characters, right? Uh, and it should be phrased uh, imperatively. So what we mean by inter imperatively is basically something like this, right? Um, you know, change something, improve something, fix something, add, delete, remove something, right? So it's an imperative form, right? So that means you should not say changes, greeting, or adds something, or deletes something, or you should not say like uh, deleted something, or added something, or fixed something, right? It should be imperative form, that means fix this or change that or revert this or that, right? So that's the commit uh, title. Then you can have a description, right? And where you, you know, elaborate on what you did and so on and so forth, right? Um, of course, you may not want to do that. Uh, so you might, at the bare minimum, you should have a title, right? And the title should be phrased uh, imperatively, right? So this is what um, I think I would say most people follow, right? Um, you may decide not to care, that is up to you, but um, when you have when you see a repository where the commit commit messages are you know uh, follow follow this convention, it it looks nice. So um, as you may or may not know, right, uh, the uh, Git was created for the you know Linux kernel, right, um, initially, right, and so you know, 
we some of the conventions come from that lah, right? Uh, and this is how the Linux kernel. And this is a commit message from the Linux kernel, right? So we have um, a, like some prefixes just to indicate which part of the project um, this you know commit is regarding, right? And then after that, you can see this one says handle something something, right? So it's in imperatively form, uh, imperatively phrased title. Then after that, they just have some long description to describe, uh, you know, uh, what the comment is fixing, la, yeah. And then at the bottom, they have this uh, signed off by, which is just uh, some convention to indicate like who authored this, um, you know, uh, comment and so on. Okay. So yes, as I said, you can create a pull requests between branches in the same repository, right? And so if you want like your partner to you know review some branches uh, before merging or if you want to set up like uh, yeah you can even set up like automated uh, uh, CI checks using like uh, github actions or whatever it is right um, yeah then you can use a pull request so you yeah, um, um, you know you, you do your work in a branch in your repository right then you make a pull request to the master branch or main branch and then you can have your partner review your code and then like you can have um, automated um, you know like CI uh, check your code and so on and so on right uh, so yeah uh, many different workflows are possible right okay so this is what we have covered um, since the last summary right um, git log uh, check out merge clone right uh, remote push and pull so all these are for collaboration la, with um, different branches as well as uh, with um, remotes like GitHub or other, you know, Git, Git servers like GitLab, etc. right? Yeah. Um, do pull requests happen after Git push? Yes, you have to, as in, you have to push your commits to GitHub first before you can create the pull request on GitHub. Right, so you have like, uh, you know, let's say your let's say the original repository is here. Then you create a fork, right? Um, so then you want to, uh, you you need to push this new commit onto GitHub first into your fork before you can do a pull request. Uh, you can make a pull request into the to the original repository to get them to uh, merge your changes. Okay. Um, uh, what does the remote command do? It, it manages uh, remotes. So what exactly is a remote? Um, so again, as I mentioned, Git is a distributed, uh, you know, distributed version control system, right? That means that um, you have your local repository, right? And you have like, let's say GitHub, Right. And GitHub is just one, you know, possible place to host your, um, your your Git repository. It could be like GitLab, or like a uh, Source Hut, or like um, whatever you want to use. Right. Um. So this is a remote, uh, a, a remote. Right. And basically, you can have multiple remotes. So like, you can have one GitHub here. You can have one in GitLab. Right, and you can have like one remote, another remote, or you can have like um, you know, your uh, upstream on GitHub, and then you can have another like remote uh, on uh, uh, let's say your on GitHub also. But your um, right, your own fork, right? Um, so the remote command just lets you manage uh, the manage these remotes. La. And basically it's just to save these remotes. So for example, right, um, you can have like multiple remotes. So for example, when you clone a repository, right, the repository that you clone for uh, that you clone it from is automatically saved as the origin remote. Then you can add multiple remotes. So like you can add your fork or you can add this, you can add that, right? Um, you can add yeah multiple remotes and then so that you can push and pull from those other remotes, right? Um, yeah, so most of the time, most of the time you only deal with like um, 
yeah, if you're working on GitHub, most of the time you will just have one single uh, remote, la, which is the uh, origin, right? Uh, but if you're working on larger projects, such as let's say the Linux kernel, right, which is uh, doesn't which doesn't do its work on GitHub, but it has its own Git hosting servers, all right, then uh, you may end up with many remotes because um, in, in the Linux project, right, um, they actually use the distributed feature of Git, meaning that everyone has their own, uh, you know, everyone has their own uh, Git uh, repository, and then like they do their work there. And if you want to pull their changes, you, you want to pull, you know, you want to merge changes from multiple people, then you need to have like uh, each of their remotes. Um, uh, yeah, you, you need to pull from separately from each of them. Uh, and therefore you might want to save these remotes as uh, remotes, then you can, yeah. So that's what the git remote command does. Uh. Again, you can look at the help. So it, yeah, can just, it lets you manage remotes, uh, right? Um, and again, the remote is just the place that you push and pull from, right? Um, and you don't have to save it, right? You can specify a URL here. So I can just do like git push. Um, I can just push like that um, if I wanted to, right? This is a remote as well, right? It's, uh, it's, I'm just specifying the URL directly la, um, instead of um, saving the remote as a name and then I use the name. Okay, does that answer your question? Okay, what's the difference between fetch and pull, right? Um, fetch basically, okay, pull is a combination of fetch plus merge or fetch and uh, rebase, right? What fetch does is, uh, let's, yeah, so fetch will re fetch a branch from the remote repository, right? Uh, so I can show you an example, okay? Um, whoops. Right. Um, where am I? Yeah. Okay. I'm in this repository, right? Uh, so, right. What what fetch does it, it, is it just pulls the, it just pulls a branch from the remote remote repository, uh, not pull. It it just downloads a branch from the remote repository and it downloads it into this uh, special name called fetch hit, right? And then you can just look at, you you can actually look at fetch hit. Right, and it will point to a certain commit. Uh, so that uh, fetch hit will just point to a particular commit, uh, the commit that um, you know you have uh, chosen to download. Uh, right, if you don't specify any commit here uh, or any branch here, then it will download the default branch of that particular remote. Right, so fetch is just downloads things. Right, then um, then you can after after that you can actually merge. Right. And it'll tell you already up to date, right? So what does uh what does pull do? Pull is a combination of um yeah, yeah okay, Git will complain la, that uh so uh, if you ever if you see this message, it's just complaining that um it wants you to decide whether you want to rebase or fast forward merge by default, right? You want to merge, you want to rebase, or you want to fast forward merge by default. And you can just pick one of them. Um, I personally choose this, right? Fast forward only. Yeah. So what's the difference between fetch and pull? Right. Uh, fetch is basically half of pull, right? Pull is a combination of fetch and then merge. Right? And you can see this in the output right? because you see git fetch does this, right? And pull does this, right? Um, and then after that, if you merge, it goes. Merge is the one that printing this um, already up to date message. So that's the difference between fetch and pull. What's the difference between a fork and a branch? Okay, a fork is, uh, okay. So when you a fork is a sort of a GitHub uh thing right? Um, basically, it's a copy of a entire repository on GitHub, right? So a repository can have multiple branches, right? Um, you can you can, uh, if you fork it, if you fork a repository, meaning that you are going to make a copy of the entire repository with all of the branches and uh, and fork it into your own account. So you make a copy of that uh, repository into the, your own account so that you can, you know, uh, make changes to that uh, copy of your, the repository, right? A branch is just a branch, right? Um, and to, to get, 
in terms of Git, right, there is not much difference, right? Uh, because a branch in one fork is the same as a branch in another fork, right? They're all just branches. Whether they're on a local repository or a remote repository, right, you just push and pull between them, right? So to Git itself, um, the br branches are just branches and there's no notion of a fork in, uh, in, in Git, right? Git just have branches and a repository is just a bunch of uh, branches together and yeah. That's, that's all a repository is, right? So a fork itself is just a copy of a repository on GitHub, right? A fork is a GitHub thing. It's not a, not really a Git thing, it's just a GitHub thing, right? Um, yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Okay, um, anyway, um, so this is actually more or less the end of the content I intend to go through, right? Um, there, if you have the slides, you'll notice that there's a bit more here, right? Um, so you can just please do look through these. Uh, they have some useful information, right? Um, these are also some exercises, uh, not exercises, but there is a, another repository that has been set up that you can um, that you can look at uh, to try right uh, these commands right um, that let you do certain uh, a bit more things. But what I've gone through is basically the the, the basics that you need to uh, start working with Git. And um, as you work with Git, uh, hopefully you will be able to understand it a bit more, right? And then uh, yeah, then you can see where these extra commands that um, you know come in useful. Uh. Uh, when will the recording be available by? Uh, I'll try to get it out soon, right? Because I need to wait for Zoom to um, process it, right? And then after that, uh, then I upload it to YouTube. I will make it available on, I'll send the link to the MS Teams channel, right? Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, do look at this extra section, right? Um, and the reason I'm not going through it because I don't think I have enough, I don't have enough time to, to properly go through it. So I think it's best if I leave it at this point. Um, yeah, I did not go through it in the previous session either. Yeah. Um, so where do you go from here, right? You can look at some other commands, right? Including uh, yeah, the extra section at the uh, last part of the slides, as well as um, yeah, you can look at to look into Git workflows, right? Um, so like how, you know, there are different strategies of, on how to work with Git, right? Um, uh, and, and the different strategies sort of suit different teams. Lah. So if you're working on Orbital, you know, most likely it's just you and a partner, right? Uh, then you might choose to go with a simpler workflow. Just everyone just, or both of you just commit into master, right? Um, yeah, uh, don't need to do anything complicated, right? Or maybe you want to do a, a stricter workflow where each of you work in branches or, and then you use pull requests, you know, uh, that's up to you. So you can look into different Git workflows. And if you want to know more, you can look into um, Hacker School Advanced Git, right? Um, uh, this was conducted, I, conduct, I ran this a um, few months, uh, yeah, last year actually, uh, end of last year, right? Um, you can check out the recording as well as the slides for Advanced Git, right? It goes into, actually covers uh, some of these Right, um, commands as well as a bit more about how Git itself works, right? Um, maybe useful to know, I think, right? Um, yeah. And that's it, right? Um, so if you have any questions, uh, I'll stick around two, three plus a bit, right? Um, if not, you know, you can always ask in the uh, MS Teams, uh, what's that channel, right? Or just ask your advisor or mentor, like they should be able to help you with Git. Thank you.